Hey everyone, so we're going to start a new video. It's a pretty nice evening, so I thought I'd start uh, figuring out this tensioner. I just uh, made up a bit of a pattern here. And this is going to be welded onto here with two holes that are threaded to move the, to track this back and forth. That'll be welded onto there like that. I'm going to have a bottle jack sort of in here <clears throat> on its side facing with the handle down so it works on its side because otherwise it won't work on its side but, so we can access the handle and then that will sit in some plates to reinforce it all and you know in the recess so that it can't slip you yeah, know something like that and we'll have a hydraulic removable for storage uh, tensioning system right let's uh, cut out some bits of metal Ten mil plate left over from the uh, post knocker build. That's my half sheet. That's gonna be good and strong. Yeah. Right now we are ready to drill the holes for the tracking bolts. Tapping these out for a ten mil nut so really I need an 8.5 drill don't know if I've got one what's that that's a 7.58 and there's my two tapped 10 mil holes for the, for the uh, tracking bolts I right, added a couple of nuts to them as well just to uh, reinforce it so the thread is in the nut and the steel um, I got the threads to all line up properly before I did it so hopefully shouldn't have any binding problems. Then we have a lock nut so we can keep our adjustment. Yeah, there we go. Right, the next thing this needs is something for that, you know, we're going to have the bottle jack. If we imagine this is a bottle jack, it's going to be pushing on there. But we don't want the bottle jack to be able to slide off, so we need something on here that keeps that the cylinder of the bottle jack, you know right where we want it there I think I've got just the thing yeah so I reckon we have a pretty decent chunk of this solid square bar we we'll drill a hole in it that's the same size as the uh, cylinder is that about 30 seconds to cut through that <laughs> Good machine that. Alright, so this little jack has a top of 27, 28mm. 28mm. I'm going to put a 28mm hole in that. About, let's go about that deep. Maybe 20mm deep. Yeah. Alright, this might be a bit of a battle drilling this out because we've got to get it to 28mm. Alright, now to 12mm. Messing about with drill bits, get some carbide on the case. Right, so there we go, that's gonna weld to there. That will sit in there and it'll locate it. 
and that will be welded to reinforce the frame that's already there. And essentially that's how uh, I will be tensioning, but it will be laid on its side because it won't work upside down like that. Yeah, that should work well. Perfect. Right, that's the outline of the uh, bottle jack, and I'm gonna tap, drill and tap these holes to six mil bolts to hold it. Right, tap these. I love a spiral fluted tap, so we're just uh, basically just drill them out with a tap. Drill to five, six mil metric bolts. Ah, Chuck's finally going on this drill. I had it six years, it's finally going. I haven't got the hex headed third one so I have to use a little allen headed one which is a pain she won't be able to get in there very well but it'll be okay. Three all line up great. Well, I'm not sure that last clip was in focus but anyway yeah there's our mounting point for it. Those get tightened on and then that will hold that up for us. Man it's cold today. Alright, so that goes in there. Let's pump that out. Slide this in a bit, maybe. Yeah, there we go. Put that located in there, like that. Go on, there we go. Okay. Pop this up. I'm not going to do it hard because there's nothing to weld it properly with. There we go. <laughs> nice. Oh, I just nipped up these bolts on the bearings and just tightened it up quite a bit. It's obviously nowhere near as tight as it as it needs to go, but it's, uh, it's on there pretty good. It's not tracking right. It's not set up, but that is going to work. Despite what you all say in the comments. That is going to work a treat. Oh, yeah, and to uh, slacken it off, it's really easy. Just turn the bolt on the bottle jack and just pull on the belt a little bit. There you go. Uh, the band, sorry. There you go. It'll just come off. Let's have a go at welding these on. Use the TIG this time, because uh, we need considerable accuracy to do this, three nuts in a row. Um, people have asked why I'm not using uh, my own power source to do the welding. Um, it's just because the only other welder I have other than the art world is a TIG welder, and it uses a lot of gas to do a big project like this, and it gets really expensive. So I use the TIG for accurate stuff, and the arc for the bulk of it. Right. Let's just see if this still turns. 
does, good. All right, got the clamps out of the way. So weld these nuts together across the top. Right, the tracking and tensioner is done for this side. Well, there's no tensioner on the other side, but the other side's got to have tracking too. Yeah, we'll start that next. Oh, that is it. Yeah, that's how it works. Bottom jack pushes on there, slides it all out. Might add a bit more reinforcement on the inside of this piece of box or something. We shall see. Hey everyone, so it is uh, way too cold and windy outside to record with sound. Um, I've just got the uh, other side tracking bolts done and the tension is all working and I'm just about to put the blade on and uh, start the engine up and see if we can keep the blade on. I've done all the tracking, it didn't take me long, it was actually really easy with the tracking bolts from each side I could point the wheels to each other. Um, so yeah I'm going to go and put the blade on and start the engine, see if we can get it to stay on. I think it will, um, from the looks of it it's tracking alright. I'm sure there will be some teething problems but we'll see but like I say it's a uh, 40 mile an hour easterly wind freezing cold so uh, it's gonna be voice over from here right let's go and uh, start this engine up so there we go starting up the engine there so you can see we have a centrifugal clutch from the drive um, off the engine the uh, clutch has plates in the back of it which spin outwards under centrifugal force and engage the pulley which drives the belt which drives the um, band wheels uh, so as I throttle it up those, those centrifugal force is going to drive those plates into the pulley and uh, engage those wheels that's happening now so there we go um, as you can see a lot of the problems with the uh, belt slap and everything are alleviated at this point because uh, there's tension on the blade and we have some load on the engine um, but we have a tracking problem and in a second the belt, uh, the band sorry, is going to come flying off and it's quite amusing to you it does, there it goes. <laughs> there we go. So yeah, I'll show you what the problem was. So the problem was just the idler pulley just not cr tracking properly. So I just uh, retracked the idler pulley. It had come out of alignment because I'd uh, moved the two wheels, the band wheels, in and out. Uh, to get the tracking of the blade properly and that put the idler pulley out of tracking but uh, now that that's done it's all sorted out uh, a few people in the last video were concerned about two things tend to come up it was the belt slap at the top of the belt and uh, the teeth chewing up the belts um, those things aren't going to be a problem as you see the belt slap is mostly gone now that the system is under load uh, before it wasn't under load so the belt could flutter around a lot um, that will, it will get even better yet still when there's blade guides and even better again when it's soaring through a log so that won't be an issue. The teeth of the band never touch the belts. The uh, back of the band is riding on the belt but the teeth don't. It's a very common setup for bandsaw mills. It's the way it's done in industry and uh, it's going to work just fine like that as you can see. I've throttled it up. It's running at about, uh, about half half uh, speed at the moment and just I'm not gonna run the engine too hard because it's uh, not running yet and the blades fluttering a bit just because it's not under full tension yet but as you can see it's uh, working very nicely right so there we go it worked great I left it running there for about 10 minutes uh, trying to run the engine in a little bit I can't run it full RPM yet uh, it's brand new, said in the manual 10 hour running period and then change the oil so yeah I can't, can't run it hard at the moment but I left it ticking over there for about 10 minutes just to start warming it up, running it in. Yeah working great, 
Tensioner works great. Again, can't tension it fully at the moment because um, it's just a, quite a few of it's just a bit of it's just spot welded and stuff. It's not all done. It's you know it's, it's clamped and what have you. I can't run three ton of tension. Um, but yeah, I mean it's tracking fine. Band stayed on for ten minutes, just ticking over, and yeah, just works great. So I'm going to weld everything up solid and then blade guides next. <laughs>